Hello, my name is Donald Burr. I don't yet have a retro channel, although I'm working on it. And this is my entry into the Usagi Electric Hello World Challenge. For those of you who don't know, Usagi Electric is a YouTuber who does all sorts of cool retro uh, computer technology stuff. And a while ago, he purchased a really obscure mini computer from the late 70s or early 80s called the Centurion. And this thing was in really sad shape. It's filthy, it's, it was badly neglected, needed a lot of cleaning, had a bunch of broken hardware that needed to be fixed. And the real problem was that there was almost nothing about this machine online. It's pretty obscure. And so Uzagi basically repaired this thing and along the way had to basically reverse engineer it with the help of a dedicated team of hackers all around the globe. And that included reverse engineering the machine code for this thing. How you program it? Yeah, it was a huge effort. And the work has been amazing. There's a ton of documentation now about this thing online. And it works. It's up and running now. Anyways, as part of the big reverse engineering and restoration process, they had to test the machine. And someone in the community came up with the machine language code to do the traditional Hello World program. The only problem is, when Usagi was typing it in, they made a bit of an error, and instead of printing Hello World, it printed Hello World. And thus, a meme was born. I now use Hello World myself whenever I'm testing out something, like if I'm testing out a new language or a new computer that I'm in the process of restoring or whatever. Anyways, Usagi has now put out this challenge for people to write and run a Hello World program on whatever obscure, weird, uncommon hardware that they have access to. And that's what we're going to do today. Today, we'll be running on a DEC PDP-8 mini computer. Actually, unfortunately, not a real PDP-8 because I don't have the space for one. But this is a pretty good replica. This is the SBC6120, which is a PDP-8 single board computer created by Bob Armstrong of Spare Time Gizmos. In addition, he also created a very realistic replica of the PDP-8 front panel to go along with it. Also, unfortunately, as much as I would love to have a real um, printing teletype terminal, I just don't have the space for one, so we'll have to make do with my computer and a serial cable. So, today I'm going to be running Hello World in PAL-8 assembly language, which is the assembly language for the uh, PDP-8. Let's uh, look at the code real quick. By the way, the PDP is an all-octal machine, base 8, so every address you see here is going to be in base 8. Anyways, we start at 0200. Our first statement here is basically setting a uh, a, a variable, a label. One of the interesting things about the PDP-8 is the first few locations in memory are actually auto-increment registers, which means after you access them, they automatically get incremented by one, which is great for like looping or going through arrays and so on. So we're going to use that to our advantage because we're going to be looping through a string printing Hello World. So this is our auto-increment register uh, we start by clearing the accumulator and the in the link uh, register. Next, we are loading the address of the message to print. And for loading, there isn't really a load instruction. Instead, what we're doing is we're doing two's complement addition. But since the accumulator is zero, we just cleared it. For all intents and purposes, that's basically loading the address of MSG into the accumulator. So yeah, now we're going to store that in the auto increment register. And by the way, that also clears the accumulator out. Anyways, we move on to the loop that's going to print the string. So what we're going to do here is we are now loading the value pointed to by the auto increment register into the accumulator. And of course, since that's auto increment, that'll automatically increment by one. We now have to decide whether or not we're done printing the string or not. The string is null terminated, so what we're doing here is SNA skips the next instruction if the accumulator is non-zero. So in other words, if we still have valid characters to print, we're going to skip over this instruction. So we're going to skip over there for now. We have a valid character to print, so we jump to the print subroutine, and then we jump back to the loop. 
to print the next character. Because we remember we used the auto increment register, so the uh, next memory address is queued up and ready to go. So once we reach the end of the string, we'll get a null character, which means zero in the accumulator. So this skip instruction is not skipped because the accumulator is zero. In that case, we're done. And so what we're doing here is jumping back to the operating system. So now let's look at the print subroutine. Now notice the first word of the subroutine is zero. Why is that? That's because another oddity of the PDP-8 is the PDP-8 has no stack. So you might wonder, well, how does it know where to return to? Because in most computers, when you jump to a subroutine, it will push the return address onto the stack. Well, we don't have a stack, so what do we do? The JMS, or jump subroutine instruction, will actually write the uh, program counter of where to return to in the first word of the subroutine where you're jumping to, which is weird, <laughs> but that's the way it does it. And then it, once it does that right, it actually starts at the next instruction down. So now we're in the print subroutine. Our first instruction is TLS, which writes the accumulator out to the terminal. We next run a TSF instruction, which skips the next instruction if the terminal is ready. So if the terminal is not ready, what we do is we do a relative jump two instructions back back to this instruction. So basically, we're just waiting until the TTY is ready before we proceed. So assuming that the TTY was ready, we skipped this instruction, then we clear the accumulator, and then we're jumping back to the print routine? What? Remember, when we did the jump to subroutine, the PDP-8 wrote the return pointer in the first word of the subroutine. So what we're doing here is we are jumping back to that first word that got written. In other words, that is our return statement. And the rest is the message to print in ASCII terminated by null. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. I'm going to switch over to my terminal. And let's fire this puppy up. We're going to boot into OS 8. And first thing we have to do is we have to create the file. So create lo.pa. There's our editor, and we hit A for append. And I'm going to paste from TerraTerm. Hopefully this will work. There we go. Watch the blinking lights. OK, file is all uploaded. So we hit Control L to exit out of insert mode, and we hit E to exit out of the editor. Now we have to assemble. So PAL hello.pa. No errors. Yay. And finally, let's run this puppy. So load hello slash G. And there you have it, Hello World on the PDP-8 in PAL-8 assembly language. But wait, there's more, because we can do this without an operating system as well. Of course, without an operating system, we don't have an assembler, which means I actually had to go through and translate everything into PDP-8 machine language by hand, which I did. And uh, this is, well, this is what it looks like. I did have to make one change, however. Um, in this line here, since we are not running in an operating system, there is no operating system to return to. So I changed this line into a halt instruction that basically halts the CPU. Anyways, here is the code that I hand assembled. Let's go ahead and paste it into the uh, machine language monitor here. And we run it by typing st for start 0200, which is the address. And there you go, hello world without an operating system on the PDP-8. But wait, there's even more, because a real PDP-8 doesn't have a fancy pants a machine language monitor. In fact, the only way to directly interact with a PDP-8 uh, without an operating system is using the switch registers. Yes, back in the day, people would actually toggle in programs manually. In fact, 
that's how you had to get the thing booted in the first place, because, yeah, the PDV-8 didn't have a boot ROM either, so if you wanted to load the OS, you actually first had to toggle in a loader program, which then loaded the OS. And actually, in the case of the PDP-8, I believe you actually had to toggle in a program to load a secondary loader off of a paper tape, and then that loader actually booted the OS from disk. So, we're going to toggle in the Hello World program the old school way. And to do that, I have, trans again, translated the uh, hand-assembled code that I just used into the appropriate switch settings to use. Uh, before we start, let me reset the machine so we can get a clean slate. And uh, yeah, time to start toggling in the program. We start by toggling in the start address, 0200. And now we start toggling in data. And by the way, interesting uh, tidbit of trivia, the DEP key, which I'm pointing at, is the deposit key. That is the key that is used to store um, switch settings into memory. You'll notice that it's mounted upside down, and that's actually how it was in real life as well. The reason why they mounted it upside down is to prevent people from accidentally pressing it and overriding memory when they didn't want to. But in this case, we do want to, so I'm going to write in our first value. 111010, blah, blah, blah. And when you write a value into memory, the address automatically increments, so we can go ahead and go on to the next value. And uh, yeah, this is going to take a while, so let me speed through this. Okay, program has been coded in, hopefully correctly. Now we have to set the uh, program counter to address 0200, which is where our program resides. Load the PC, and hopefully this works. We press the continue key to begin execution. Ha! Yay! And there you have it. Hellworld toggled in old school style. Thanks for watching.